Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord today, saints. Hallelujah to the mighty King. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've made and for your spirit, Lord, that comes to us by the blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. The blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one, bringing the life that is true to your people today, Lord. I bless you and praise you and thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy to the children of men. Hallelujah. Peace on earth, you said, Lord, through the angel. Hallelujah. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Hallelujah. You still have your grace extended out, Lord, to all of this earth that would come, that would humble their self before you. Father, I pray that you would bring them in today. Father, we pray that you would just so anoint this message today, Lord, that you would burn as a fire in our bones, Lord, that we would receive what you want to give, Father, that you would just so speak through us today and help us to keep our minds, our hearts, our whole lives stayed upon you, Lord, that we would not deviate to the right or to the left, Lord, but that we would set our faces like flint to do your will, Lord, to walk in your will as you have revealed it to us. And as we do that, Lord, we know you will reveal more to us that you long to do in us, for us, and through us. I pray you crush every demonic force, Lord, that would try to come against your people today. Any of us, Lord, that would try to hinder us in any way, shape, or form, Lord, that you would just crush it today. And that the devil would be de totally, manifestly defeated in our lives, O oh God, and every area, Lord, where uh, we receive opposition from people, or, or the devil, or the world, Lord, that you would just manifestly show forth the deliverance this day. Hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, been given some thought lately about and been reading and studying in Isaiah chapter 24 25 and 26 and you know these these are the days that we're in we're coming to and and also these things the prophecies of God are really eternal you know they 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 stretch forth across many ages in the spirit because see the word Jesus said the words that I speak unto you in John 6 it's recorded they are spirit and they are life and therefore because the word that he spoke through Isaiah the prophet is spirit it, it ranges really all of the dispensations and <laughs> you can see in the spirit many many applications and principles and we need to adhere to what the Lord is showing us today and, and when you're reading the scripture today you, you think about in the spirit okay because man has taken the scripture really in this age that we live in and they've relegated it down to just the natural realm and first of all it's 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 the spiritual realm okay God is a spirit Jesus said and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah it's and so God's going to communicate to us through His Spirit. And the place He does that is in our spirit. Okay? So if, if I'm focused all the time on the natural realm, on the uh, temporal realm, then I'm not focused on the Spirit. Therefore, I cannot hear what God is saying because I'm not focused in the Spirit. I'm not focused upon him okay I'm not stayed on him if I'm constantly thinking about what's going on around me in the world what's going on with the economy the the political systems of this world the religious systems of this world trying to change all the the, the things in the church trying to make it happen I'm not keeping my focus on the Lord if I'm trying to do all that if I'm concerned with all that what I have to be concerned with is am I and what you must be concerned with, what all of us must be concerned with, are we in the will of God today? Am I in that place? Am I that, that finger or am I that hand in the body, a member of the body of Christ? Am I doing what I'm called to do? Because I can tell you, sometimes you can fall out of the way. You can, you can uh, and it just, 
it doesn't have to be a drastic fall off a cliff either. It can be a just a slow little slip or a slow little slide, and you don't even recognize it. So, so God wants us to keep our minds stayed upon Him. In Isaiah 24, it says that, it says, now this is prophecy now, and this is true prophecy. This is not a uh, fake, uh, made up, just, you know, whim of the wind, some kind of uh, flashy thing that people out there in the world today are prophesying and trying to look good with all their hairdos. And, and you know, uh, I saw a picture of this guy, uh, on a website and he's supposed to be some big prophet and he's got long curly hair like he went to the to the beauty parlor or something you know this is not the Lord okay I mean this is not the the image of of the Lord Jesus Christ okay Jesus came he was despised and rejected of men Jesus came there was nothing in him that would draw us and attract us to him okay in the way that he looked so all this stuff we see today with the flash and everything in the church, it's all a big pile of dung. It really is, okay? It, it's not of the Lord the, for the most part. Because here's, here's the true prophet, Isaiah, who prophesied so many things that have come to pass and are coming to pass, are coming to pass. That then, like, let me give you an instance. Let me give you a for instance here, just to show you what I mean a little bit further. When it says in Isaiah 53, okay, let's go there. In Isaiah 53, praise the Lord. It says in verse 11, He shall see, talking about Jesus, of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities hallelujah you see that word right there he shall see of the travail of his soul every time a person gets saved and born again Jesus is seeing of the travail of his soul how he travailed in the garden how he travailed every day of his ministry with fallen men with temptation he was travailing he was praying and interceding okay and shall be satisfied see he, he's satisfied now Jesus is completely totally satisfied he's in the glory in his flesh and bone body risen from the dead it says by his knowledge shall my righteous servant that's the Lord Jesus justify many for he shall bear their iniquity see he's still able to take our iniquity and subdue it hallelujah and throw it into the depths of the sea this is still happening today because you can get victory 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 in certain areas of your life and you're going along and you've got the victory and you're you're not aware of anything going on and all of a sudden something happens and bam oh here comes that old iniquity here comes that old fallen nature rising to the surface because maybe we weren't uh, attentive in the spirit for a moment something happened and, and that old nature just rose up and then the Lord swoops down in and he and he convicts us and then he he subdues that iniquity and he throws it into the depths of the sea so you can see this prophecy that Isaiah prophesied being fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ and through him and through his work is still being relevant today hallelujah so look at this prophecy here in chapter 24 it says behold the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof now we're made of earth okay God formed man out of the dust of the ground and God breathed into man and man became a living soul so when you think about your being you're made of earth you have a, a clay vessel and your soul dwells in the blood and, and the blood's made in the very marrow of our bones and then the Lord comes in and he gives us new life after we repent and believe the gospel so now we have our spirits renewed hallelujah brand new spirit controlling our soul manifesting through the body okay 
The Lord maketh the earth empty. See? He maketh it empty. The Lord removes all that old nature, okay, by the blood. As we apply the blood of Jesus, as we come to the cross, the old nature is subdued. The old nature is put down. Hallelujah. See? We are to reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin. And it's a very lifelong process of learning how to come to the cross daily and how to take up our cross and walk with the Lord so that old flesh doesn't have the preeminence. Hallelujah. And maketh it waste and turneth it upside down. See, God is, is He is actually taken through His Son. Hallelujah. Through His Son, He is He is subdued and taken all that old nature and just crushed it and annihilated it. See? But the problem is we don't reckon it to be so. We've been there's teachers out there teaching, oh, you have to sin. You you can't stop sinning. And the Bible says everyone sins and you know and, and you know, I read this morning, let me go over there to uh, Proverbs. Uh I read this this morning and, and this is so true. This is so true. You cannot uh it says in verse nine of chapter twenty of Proverbs, who can say I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Who can say that? Nobody can say that. Who can say I have made my, my I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Nobody can say that, saints. Not one person. And Jesus didn't even say that. Why? Because Jesus never had any sin and his heart was always clean, see? You see what I'm saying? So we can't say that about ourselves. But that doesn't mean we have to have a thought in our mind that I have to sin. I can't help it, you know. No, yes you can. If you're born anew from heaven, you can submit to God and surrender to God and resist the devil and the devil will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. See? And then the Lord, it says, He turns it upside down, the earth. See? God Has God ever turned your life upside down? Has God ever done something in your life where it just felt like your whole life was turned upside down? And scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Sometimes God has to turn our life upside down in order to scatter abroad all those inhabitants, you know, those thoughts that we have sometimes that just seem to rush in, you know, and, and just take us over. Maybe thoughts about our circumstances, thoughts about people, thoughts about how people have done us, or whatever it is, you know, God wants to scatter all that. He wants us to have one mind, one heart set upon Him. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Now, there's a physical application and there's a time coming when when this prophecy will manifest in the natural. But right now, look at it in the Spirit. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. Here's Peter over here. And he is a man, a fisherman, in the eyes of the Pharisee, a poor, stinking, smelly fisherman. Okay, unlearned, uneducated. And here's Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking on the day of Pentecost preaching the gospel and 3,000 souls get saved and the Pharisees are absolutely envious and jealous and murderous and hatred and they want to kill them because they don't have that power. They don't have the ability to stand up and speak as Peter spoke on that day. As with the people, so with the priest. See, God brought everybody on a level plane when Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the dead, hallelujah, and ascended into heaven he looks down, God looks down on, on earth now, and God doesn't see, oh, look at that rich man over there. Let me let me help him because he's rich, and he has a lot of this world's goods. Look at him. Oh, I just want to favor that guy. And then God look over at that poor person and say, oh, you stupid poor person. I don't want to help you, blah, blah, blah. God doesn't do that, see? It's the same with God. God looks at the poor, at the rich man and says, oh, look how poor you are. And God looks at the poor man and says, let the poor say that I am rich. Hallelujah. This is what the scripture says. See? Because it's not about how much a person has in, of this world's goods. It's about how much does the Lord have of you. Hallelujah. It's about how much control does God have of your life today. 
It's about how much do you know the Lord today by surrender. See, we can't know the Lord by intellectual knowledge. We can know about the Lord, but we can't know the Lord. Okay? Intimacy with the Lord. Know His heart. Jesus said in John chapter 4, and it's recorded, Isaiah 24 is a good place to start, and I see the Holy Spirit taking us very many places today. Hallelujah. In John 4, Jesus said, they came to Jesus, they said, Lord, eat, they told him. He's sitting by the, by the well there, and, and in the meanwhile, verse 31 of chapter 4, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. See? They went to town to buy food. They went to town to get some bread and some meat and some, some, some lettuce or whatever. They went to town to get some vegetables so that they could eat. They had a long journey from Jerusalem, okay, up and in, in going through the mountains there to Jacob's well. And so they came to him and they said, You need to eat, Lord. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him all to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Hallelujah. See, Jesus was concerned with the Father's work. He wasn't concerned about himself okay and that's how God wants is bringing all of us to more and more as we surrender more daily God's going to be bringing you as you surrender more to be concerned about his work and not your own okay not what you want to do but what God says to do and we're in a trying time where there's going to be many testings as the Lord upturns this earth as he turns the world upside down as the order, the cosmos of this world order changes, because it's going to change, it's going to dissolve. I've been preaching on that, how God's going to dissolve all this stuff. See? It's what it says in Isaiah 34. It says that in 2 Peter chapter 3. It says it in Isaiah 14. It says it in Isaiah 13. It says it. God's going to dissolve all these things. In Jeremiah 25, God says he has a cup. He told Jeremiah, give it to the nations to drink. All the nations of the earth, it says. All the nations of the earth. And they're going to drink it and they're going to be mad. They're going to they're gonna vomit. They're going to spew. And they're, they're just going to fall. See? And Babylon's going to be destroyed. And where, as a believer, will you be? I ask you today. God's asking you. Are you going to be focused on the stock market? Are you going to be focused on football? Are you going to be focused on this world? When all this stuff starts happening and coming down, or are you going to be focused in that hour on the Lord Jesus? This is something God's asking me to examine in my own life. See, Jesus said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Hallelujah. In another place in John chapter 6, they said to Jesus, they said, hey, what is the... Uh, he said, the people therefore said unto him, let me find it right here. Then said they unto him, verse 28 of John 6, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? What, what, what are we going to do that we might work the work of God? Work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. See, believing the faith, what I was preaching yesterday. See, it's the law of faith, the righteousness, hallelujah, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the faith of Jesus Christ. We have to keep our focus upon him. So it's going to be as with the people, so with the priest. Everybody's even here. Okay, as with the servant, so with his master. You know, some bosses, they, they get all high and, mar and, and haughty sometimes. Bosses do. They're haughty because they own the company. And, and they're the, the ones that are calling the shots, so to speak. But right here it says, it says, As with the servant, the worker, so with his master. 
as with the maid, so with her mistress. You know, in these times when this was written, and even today in, in, in certain nations, nations, a wife will have a mistress. She will have, uh, I mean, I mean not, a, not a mistress, but she will have a, a maid who does all her bidding for her. She tells her, do this, do that, and that, that maid's going, boy, she's doing exactly what uh, the woman of the house tells her to do. But right here it says, it says, as with the maid, so with her, with her mistress. Okay, the wife is the mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. So with the seller, even. As with the lender, so with the borrower. Oh, you, have you ever went to the bank and tried to get a loan? And, and, and they just look at you. No, you don't have enough collateral. No, you're not. See, it's going to be even in this time. It's going to be even. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. This covers everything, I believe, verse 2 of chapter 24 of Isaiah. And God says it's, he's going to bring it all down to the level playing field. And you know what's going to be preeminent in that hour? You know what's going to be the preeminent thing in that hour? It's going to be the Lord. It's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. How much of Jesus Christ is formed in us? Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. How much peace are we going to be walking in? It says in verse 3 of 24 of Isaiah, The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled for the Lord hath spoken this word the Lord hath spoken this word the land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled for the Lord hath spoken this word you remember when Hurricane Sandy went through hit New Jersey you know last year or the year before or whatever and do you remember what it looked like, all those images of the beach there, you know? It was just totally wasted. Totally wasted. Totally. It says in verse 4, The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The haughty, the prideful. Those who are going around, they're so prideful. Nations are full of pride today. America is the biggest prideful nation in the earth today full of pride and arrogance and it says here the haughty people of the earth do languish languish the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinance broken the everlasting covenant they've broken the everlasting covenant see they've transgressed the laws by saying there is no law there's no more law by saying that. That's transgressing the law of God. And they break the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. What I was reading in Isaiah 13 the other day. Their faces shall be as flames, it says. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. All the merry-hearted, all those having fun today. The cult of nice, you know, where, you know, that picture we, we paste, we, we put on our Facebook, and, and they, they're all smiling, and they're all happy, you see. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of Tabray ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Many today, they're drinking it up. Boy, they're having parties, drinking parties, Monday night football at the grill, all this stuff. They're, they're just boozing it up. It's going, it's going to be bitter to them. Bitter to them. And then in verse 10, The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. I want to finish verse. Let me go back to verse 10. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. People are going to be so afraid of what's coming on this earth because they're not filled with the Spirit of God. They have not cultivated. And many people who are born again 
have not grown in salvation. They just got saved. That's enough for them. And now they're going to do what they want to do and work as hard as they can work to make as much as they can make to live as comfortable as they can live. But in this hour, there's not going to be any comfort okay, from the world. There's not going to be any comfort from circumstances and stuff like that. There's not. When this happens in, in the natural, it, there's not going to be any comfort. Hallelujah. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up. People are going to be locked behind their doors. They're going to be so afraid that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land, among the people there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, as the gleaning grapes, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. They shall lift up their voice, they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. That's the people who are the Lord's people, those who, in Isaiah chapter 13, it says right here, let me read this to you. It says, Lift ye up a banner, verse 2, upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded, God says, my sanctified ones, my set apart ones. Jesus said in John 16, He said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Let me make sure on that one because it might be John 17. I want to make sure so when you go look it up you can know exactly where to go it's John 17 Jesus said I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world verse 15 but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil they are not of the world talking about us saints they are not of the world even as I am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth as thou hast sent me into the world Talking to, he's talking to the Father. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Now that's, like I said, that's, that is huge right there. That's huge. We could not exhaust that in all of our lifetime. That one verse. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, Jesus says, I sanctify myself. I set myself apart, he's saying to the Father, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. See, we're to be sanctified vessels. And right here in Isaiah 13, God says, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Hallelujah. And then verse 4 says, The noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. This is so spiritual right here. This is so mighty right here. God is, is, is mustering. God is getting His people together throughout the nations in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Because there's going to be a great onslaught from the enemy against the church in the end. And God is going to have a people who are sanctified. And God is going to have a people who know how to pray. Who know how to seek His face. Who will surrender. And who do surrender. Hallelujah. It's not going to be any more about this world. Hallelujah. God will take care of all of our circumstances. Me and my wife are a witness to that fact. Oh, we've had many times, many lean times in between when God's helped us and God's given unto us everything that we've needed. There have been times, little seasons, where it's been very lean. But let me tell you something. In the leanness, there's fullness because you keep your focus on the Lord. You keep your focus on the Lord. You might be lean in temporal things. That's okay. Keep your focus on the Lord and you'll be full. Hallelujah. I remember back in 2000, I think it was, or 2001, probably 2000 me and my wife we had we had this little bitty motor home before we got the one we have now before the Lord gave us that one and uh, we didn't have very much to eat at the time and I made two pieces of bread ground up the wheat flour and made two pieces of bread and we sat at the table 
and we had these two pieces of bread and had a little bit of mayonnaise and mustard I mixed together to put on it and uh, we were sitting there and I began to pray and it was like the Lord just came right down to that table it was so magnificently pure and holy I mean it was like we, we just couldn't even talk you know there have been many times like that in our lives where we have been when when you're like you're deprived or there's there's just something happening in your life God's doing a work inside of you through circumstances you look to God you pray you thank the Lord and we were just thanking God for that bread we began to weep and cry and worship the Lord it was so beautiful see God's been teaching us a long time he told us we were forerunners to go before his people to help them to to stand in this hour because if you don't walk with the Lord close today you you you, you can find yourself and this goes for me first because I'm preaching it to you we can find ourselves in an area maybe of bitterness or of grudging when stuff happens and, and we could be locked into that and I don't want to be locked in I don't want to have a heart that grudges and that covets against God and says no to God I want to have a heart that's open and that says yes to the Lord no matter what no matter what because that's what Jesus did Jesus knew where he was going when he was talking with Moses and Elijah up on the mountain they were talking to him about his his work that he would accomplish in Jerusalem he knew he was going to the cross and he knew it would be a battle and he went willingly see and God wants us to go willingly God says it is a battle my people he says remember that in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world and good cheer there is jump up and down for joy rejoice evermore hallelujah we have nothing to fear from man nothing to fear from the from the devil from Satan and all his hordes from whatever these false teachers are pushing out there about Nephilim and all this stuff about fallen angels and all that stuff they are already defeated hallelujah we have the victory and we are to walk in the victory and you see Jesus he sanctified himself so that we would be sanctified in the truth and through the truth set apart and we are the sanctified ones see that the Lord is using in this hour see God says I have also called my mighty ones his saying I have commanded my sanctified ones this is Isaiah chapter 13 verse 3 I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger even them that rejoice in my highness the church needs to stop rejoicing in the world okay in the ways of the world in enjoying all the stuff of the world the church needs to stop all that see yeah God's given us the Bible says all good things to enjoy and that's right he has okay and that's the truth and we do thank the Lord that we have water to drink clean water we thank the Lord that, that we have food to eat we thank God that we that we have a, a grocery store we can just drive to and go to we thank the Lord that we live in a place where we all most of us have cars we can drive or get on a bus and go somewhere we thank God for all these things but God says don't set your heart on these things set your heart on me let it be focused totally upon me because one day those things will shut down one day there won't be no electricity one day there won't be no gasoline then what it didn't happen in Long Island. I mean, that, that whole island was shut down for weeks. I mean, there was nothing. Their ATM little cards would not work. What then? What then? Oh, run to the line that the government set up. Oh, go to the government camp so they can feed you. No, they won't feed you. Man will not help you in that hour. Only God is the sustainer of his people. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 14 of Isaiah 24. They shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. The sea means trouble. 
the waves and the, and the winds roaring. See? Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. Glorify ye the Lord, hallelujah, in the fires. Oh, praise God, hallelujah. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear. Now listen to this. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. Fear and the, and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. That's those people who are just may I say hell bent hell bent on the world and the things of the world fear in the pit and the snare are upon thee says the Lord O inhabitant of the earth inhabitant of the earth Jesus said something similar to that didn't he in uh, Luke chapter 21 let's go there Luke 21 Hallelujah. Jesus said. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise you, Jesus. And take heed to yourself, verse 34, Jesus said, Luke 21. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. See? God's having me warn you that day's coming. See? And and don't be overcharged. See, I was just talking about in being in the world and being overcome in the world and all the worldly stuff. And here's Jesus. See, I'm not saying nothing that's not true. I'm speaking the truth to you. Okay? God wants you, and He wants me, He wants my wife, He wants every member of the body of Christ to receive His truth. Because when we receive the truth, we are blessed. Then we are in covenant relationship and fellowship with God Almighty, who created all things. Hallelujah. Take heed to yourselves, Jesus is telling his people, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with serviting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare, there it is, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. See, the Bible teaches us, saints, that there are people who dwell on the face of this earth. You can see them today when you go to town. You can see them around your neighborhood. You can see them out in the city when, you, when you're walking down that, that boulevard or that avenue in New York City today. Look at all those people dwelling on the earth. And while you're walking down that boulevard, while you're walking down that avenue, okay, you are to be dwelling where? In heavenly places in Christ. Your spirit man is dwelling in heaven with Jesus at the Father's right hand. Your temple is down here on this earth to be a witness and a testimony unto the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because as a snare, this... This is going to be a lot of stuff happening as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell in the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 3, 8 through 10 speaks of being kept from the hour of temptation because we're focused on the Lord. Because we continue to do exactly what the Lord is telling us to do. God will keep us, hallelujah, in perfect peace. Whose minds are stayed on Him. See, do you want perfect peace? You have to keep your mind stayed on the Lord today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it shall come to pass, verse 18, chapter 24 of Isaiah that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear, many people are going to run 
shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. Now I'm going to go over here to uh, Amos chapter 5. I, think, I believe it's verse 18. Amos, book of Amos, another prophet of God. Hallelujah, a true prophet. Amos the prophet. Hallelujah. He was a shepherd. God sent him to prophesy over in uh, Israel, in the northern kingdom. God sent him up there to prophesy. Amos didn't want to go, but he went. He was obedient to God. Verse 18 of Amos, chapter 5 says, Woe unto, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand upon the wall. He's safe in his house. Ah, he's running from the fear and he puts his hand on the wall. Hallelujah. And a serpent bit him. Oh man. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Oh, praise God. People don't understand that. Hey, I don't fully understand it. All I know is that's what it says. And let me tell you something. God will visit you. He'll come visit you sometimes in, in your darkest hour when you think there's just absolutely no hope at all. God shows up. Hallelujah. And he visits you. God wants to visit some of you today. All of you, really. But there's some of you, you've been crying out to God. I know we've been crying out to God. I want God to visit us. I want him to come down and visit us. Speak to us face to face like he did Moses. But it's a frightening thing. When you feel him coming near, drives you down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very darkness, very dark and no brightness in it? Hallelujah. I'm just going to go ahead and read verse 21. God says to his church today, This is a prophecy, you know. I hate, God says, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. These people, most most people today in the Western churches, they're assembling to, to pat each other on the back. You know, to, to to just speak soft words one to another. No challenging word. No uh, sort of truth coming forth. Hallelujah. God says, I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. In other words, God's not listening to people today who are bent on their self-life God's not receiving that. God doesn't receive that. Okay? God receives a broken and a contrite heart. Hallelujah. He says, Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Hallelujah. Let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. We have a dear friend and, and, and a brother that wrote a song and uh, the, he used this scripture in the song. It's very powerful. Maybe we'll play it for you sometime. Hallelujah. Uh, and let me finish up here in Isaiah 24 here. Hallelujah. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish. He's going to punish the host of the high ones that are on high, the haughty, okay, the prideful, and the kings of the earth that are upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut in, shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. Chapter 25. O oh Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. 
Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. For thou hast made of a city a heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. You see, 24, 25, and 26 go together. Listen. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nation shall fear thee. We are the city, saints, of the terrible nations. And we do fear the Lord. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. You see? See, doesn't that confirm everything I was just saying to you? Hallelujah. About the Lord coming in, about the Lord visiting His people, about the Lord helping us. See? About the Lord, He, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, you know, every single person on the face of this earth is equal. They're all sinners. They all need a Savior. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Jesus said, how hard it is for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. See? And then he said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. See? God can take a rich man, so rich and so wealthy in this world, and just break his heart. Just break his heart right in half. Just break it. And just reveal to him the uselessness of all of his riches if kept for himself. See? Useless means absolutely nothing. But when he starts to spread it abroad, hallelujah, see? God can break his heart and he can start distributing it. Hallelujah to the Lord's people, to the people the Lord shows him to give it to. Hallelujah. For the glory of God, not for his glory. That's just a benefactor. But for the glory of God, secretly just giving it to the poor, just helping those who are in need, genuine need. There's so many people out in the world today who are like that. And God can save a rich man. See, God can do it. Hallelujah. It says, Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in the dry place. That's verse 5 of 25. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible ones, shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees, well refined. Now I want you to look at that in the Spirit. I mean, you can be so filled with the Spirit of God, hallelujah, that, that the Spirit of God's flowing out of us like a mighty river where we're just communing with God constantly, hallelujah. Verse 7, And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. That has taken place, saints, in the cross. Hallelujah. And it takes place more and more every day. And we're going to see more of a manifestation of that. That he's going to destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. The Bible says that the devil has blinded the minds, blinded the eyes of those that are lost so that they cannot see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ and be saved. But God says he's going to remove the veil today. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name you remove that veil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Verse 8. This has been done. Now I'm going to read this. It's been done. And it's going to be done even more. And it's being done today. And he does it every day. This is prophecy. True prophecy. I love true prophecy. As opposed to false prophecy. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord will wipe away tears from off all faces. Hallelujah. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. Oh hallelujah. Now that's something we can stand on isn't it? That God today will swallow up death in victory. Hallelujah. The death of sin. Because sin leads to death, doesn't it? That's the fruit of sin is death. See? And God swallows up death in victory. Hallelujah. By the resurrection of His Son. His death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. Hallelujah. And the rebuke of His people shall He take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. That's enough because he spoke it and it shall be said in that day and we say this every day <laughs> praise God and so should you and we should all say it every day and it shall be said in that day lo this is our God we have waited for him and he will save us this is the Lord 
We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab, Moab, shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. Now I'm going to say something the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit right here. Moab means his father is his mother's father. Okay, It's incest is what it is. And today, I'm telling you right now, many people are committing incest with the devil. Okay? Many people, they are absolutely enthralled with their flesh, with their self. Oh, and they've made it so good. It looks good, oh, and it feels good, and everything's going fine, and they're having this incestuous relationship with the fallen angels and the, and the fallen flesh. See? And it says here, For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest in Moab, all that stuff, all that incestual junk shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, God is, as, as he that swimmeth spreadeth forth his hands to swim, and he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. That's exactly what I was preaching earlier. And the fortress of the high fort of thy walls shall he bring down and lay low and bring to the ground even to the dust. Hallelujah. Now there's some true prophecy. Heed the word today. Give it up. Surrender all of your life. Surrender everything you have to the Lord. Let him be the steward and use you as a vessel to steward with him. Hallelujah. Many people say, I'm stewarding this for God. They're like the guy that took the, the talent and he took that one little gold coin that God gave him and he buried it in the ground. And they're, they're stewarding it. The other guy, the faithful, are taking that, that ten talents that God gave them and they're going out and making ten more. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean the stock market now. Okay? That, that's not what it means. Okay? You can't work and, and do something and just, okay, I'm going to take this hundred dollars and I'm going to multiply it for the Lord. And then you start to multiply it and it becomes two hundred then 400, then 800, then 1,600. Before you know it, you got 5 million and you're still going and you're still getting it for the Lord and you're still, you just got it all in your arms and you're just hanging on to it. That's not what God's talking about, okay? It's not for you, okay? It's for the Lord, hallelujah. See, that guy, he brought and said, here, Lord, he gave him, see? He went back to the Lord as it was multiplying. He went back to the Lord and kept giving it back to the Lord. And the Lord said, hey, you're a faithful servant. Oh man, this is so important. Chapter 26. Because 24, 25, and 26, you read these together in context. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. This song is going to be sung in the land of Judah. I need a drink of water. I have to pause every so often and just get a drink. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, In that day, chapter 26, Isaiah, This is the day the Lord has made, saints. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Shall this song be sung in the land of Judah? We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Ain't nothing can get through that. Nothing can get through the Lord Jesus to touch us. Hallelujah. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. We are that righteous nation today if we're walking by the Spirit. Hallelujah. If we're walking in the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed me today from the law of sin and death. See, we sing that song. Hallelujah unto the Lord. Verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind, whose affections, whose thoughts, hallelujah, is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. See, God's the only trustworthy one there is. Hallelujah. Trust ye in the Lord. 
Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord, in the Lord, Yah, in Yah, Jehovah is everlasting strength. Not in the world. Not in the things of the world. Hallelujah. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city. See, everyone's a city now. Some cities are prideful, lofty. Babylon, some cities are humble. Humility, love, joy, peace. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, he layeth it low. He, he layeth it low, even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down. Verse 6. Even the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy are going to tread down the prideful. Yeah, the feet of the poor are going to tread it down. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou most upright doth weigh the path of the just. Yea, and how are we just? I preached it yesterday. How are we just, saints? We're just by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're just by the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're, we're, we're just because Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah. Because of one man's obedience, many are made righteous. Romans chapter 5. Hallelujah. Yea, in the way of thy judgments, O Lord, we have waited for thee. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. With my soul have I desired thee, O Lord, in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me will I seek thee early, O Lord. For when thy judgments are in the earth, when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. Hallelujah. Let favor, the Lord says, let favor, be showed to the wicked. See, God does that every day. Let's favor be showed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly. And will not behold the majesty of the Lord. That is so sad, isn't it? So sad. You know, a Christian who says, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I walk with the Lord. I believe in the Lord, and they're walking with the Lord, but they're doing unjust, unrighteous things, like oppressing the poor, maybe, in their wages. Let's just say that. Or oppressing the poor in their need in some way. They're oppressing the poor. Okay? That's wickedness. Okay? Let favor be showed to that person, God says. Yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness... In the land of uprightness. Where's that land? It's Beulah land. It's Jesus. In the land of uprightness, will he deal unjustly? In the church today, they're doing this. And will not behold the majesty of the Lord. They don't behold the majesty of the Lord. They're seeing something false that the devil is giving them to see. Verse 11. Isaiah 26. This is a song now. Let me, let me read verse 1 again. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. Do you know what Judah means, saints? Judah means celebrate. Hallelujah. Praise. Sharon has this little plaque we have over by the motorhome now. And it says celebrate. It's beautiful. It says celebrate. Hallelujah. See, we need to celebrate every day that we are the victors. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Not by anything which we have done. Hallelujah. But all because of what he has done. Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. But they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemy shall devour them. Look at that, saints. When, Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. These people will not see. The wicked, those who are, are dealing falsely with people. Those who are born anew and even filled with the Spirit of God, but yet they're acting in the flesh. They're walking by the flesh. They've got salvation now. They don't need to, to cultivate the salvation that they have. They don't need Jesus formed in their life. No, they have everything they need. And they oppress those who are walking the narrow way. They oppress those who are walking by the Spirit. 
but it says, Lord, when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see. We find this right now in our own lives. The Lord's hand is lifted up. The Lord's hand is lifted up. The Lord is bringing forth His truth through His people to those who have sold out to the Lord. But the church doesn't see. They will not see. But they shall see. They shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Do you know they turned Jesus over to Pilate because of envy? Do you know that? It says in the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, because of envy. See? Yea, the fire of thine enemies shall devour them. Verse 12, Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also has wrought all our works in us and for us. O Lord, our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. See, other lords beside the Lord have had dominion over his people. The lords of this world, the lords of money, the lords of fashion, the lords of all the stuff that this world affords. But God says, come out of that. He's constantly telling his people in the scripture, come out of her, my people. But by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Hallelujah. See, these are the sanctified ones. These are the ones called for the Lord's work. They are dead. They shall not live. They are deceased. They shall not rise. Therefore hast thou visited and destroyed them and made all their memory to perish. Thou hast increased the nation, O Lord. Thou hast increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Thou hast removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Oh, many times we've been there. Like as a woman with child that draweth near, the time of her delivery is, is in pain, and crieth out in her pain, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. Yeah, we've been there, saints. Oh, all the true saints have been there. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Yeah, it's like that, isn't it? It's like that. It's like you see, what, Lord, why isn't this happening? Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? This is the cry, see, of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah. He's crying. Verse 19, Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead, hallelujah, the resurrection. The resurrection is here right now in the spirit and the resurrection of the body is coming soon, hallelujah. Come, the Lord says, come, my people. Enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, behold, world, for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Oh, hallelujah, saints. Oh, hallelujah. i got to read 27. I'm just going to begin in 27. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword. What is that? That's his word. Shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last night. Oh, we had some stuff happen yesterday. And last night we were driving home toward dark. Yeah, I had the headlights on, coming down the highway. Yeah, there it was, right in the middle of the highway. Big old copperhead, about two or three feet long, stretched out. I said, that's a copperhead. And when I saw it, I ran it over, and I heard this sound. It went, just like that, pop. 
I said, I'm turning around to make sure that dude is dead. And I turned around, I went over there, and I killed that snake. I killed that serpent. See, and right here, look at this. It says, in that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. It's coming. It's coming to all those prideful people who insist on walking in their pride and do not humble themselves before the Lord. God's judgment is headed your way. Repent today, says the Lord. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. Oh, it was crooked, all right. When I got done with it, hallelujah. It was flat as a pancake on the highway, hallelujah. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. And that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Oh, hallelujah. I want to know what that is, Lord. Show me one day what that is. Hallelujah. In that day sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what to say anymore. The, the word of the Lord is so powerful. It, it just blows me down, man. I'm telling you. I pray to God that God put a fire in all of you today. I just pray God fill you with His fire. I pray that He fills you with His love and His mercy. Hallelujah. I gotta keep going. I'm gonna finish this chapter out here. In that day, sing, <laughs> sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Ah, the Lord do keep it. <laughs> I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. Oh, doesn't the Lord keep you, saints? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? I would go through them. I would burn them together, says the Lord. <laughs> or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with me. In other words, God says, hey, you want to wrestle with me like Jacob? Come on, bring it on. God says, bring it on. You want to wrestle with me like, like my servant Jacob did? Come on. God says, you can wrestle with me. God says, you can tackle me down. But when you, when you get done, when you got God in the headlock, okay, you got in there, he's going to hit you right on the thigh. He's going to dislocate something in your life. Hallelujah! And then you'll know, oh, you've been touched by the Lord. Then you will be Israel. That's what happened to Jacob. God said, I'm changing your name to Israel. Hallelujah! See? So you want to you wanna become Israel today? Hallelujah! Get in a wrestling match with God. Verse 5, Or let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with me. He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Hallelujah. Israel shall blossom and bud. Yeah. And fill the face of the world with fruit. That's what's happened, isn't it? Since the resurrection. Yeah, that's what's happened. See, there's fruit all over the world. Hallelujah. The fruit of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the devil hates it. So the devil goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The devil's going out with all of his guns and all of his tanks and all of his uh, armaments and all the stuff that he has. Yeah, and he's going after the saints of the Most High God. That's what it's all about. Because God has a controversy with the nations over Zion. Hallelujah. And there comes, there comes the devil, you know, with all these tanks and all these armaments and all his wicked people dressed like they look like, uh, they look like big giant locusts with all their stuff on now. See? They look all like all this stuff and they're going out in the earth trying to kill everybody. But what does God say? Hallelujah. God says, He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. Hallelujah. He hath smitten him as he smote those that smote him. Hath he smitten him? Let me see. Ah, I gotta see. Hath he smitten him as he smote those that smote him? Or is he slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him? In measure, when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. He stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind. <laughs> Hallelujah. In measure, when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. Yeah, we find that when, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we begin to preach the truth, people debate. Uh, they debate the truth. Hallelujah. Christians who say they believe the Word of God, they'll sit there and debate the truth with you. Debate the truth. The truth is to be received, not debated. Okay, the devil is the one who's trying to debate the truth. God's Word is to be received so it brings life to us in fullness. Hallelujah. By this, therefore, shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged 
and this is all the fruit to take away his sin when he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones that are beaten in sunder the groves and images shall not stand up in other words God says you know that altar they used to go and they they put 12 stones you know God said this is how you do it you build put 12 stones one for every tribe of Israel okay and they had a special altar and it was holy man it was sanctified by God Almighty and they put a lamb on there. And if that priest was dirty in any way, man, oh, it was terrible for that priest. And the Holy of Holies was even worse. I mean, if a priest went in there, the, the high priest went in the Holy of Holies, in that time, if he went in there with sin, he was gone, man. He was dead. They used to tie a rope around his legs so they could pull him out in case he died. Because they weren't about to go through there. Okay? I mean, this is serious business. Today, it's even more serious. Okay? You see, God has taken away that altar that altar stood for something that altar represented something and it still does when you read the Old Testament you see the word altar you see that word altar it's speaking of the cross it's speaking of the cross of the Lord Jesus hallelujah and that cross of the Lord Jesus he said take up your cross and follow me in other words lay it all on the altar lay your whole life on the altar every day and surrender to God hallelujah by this therefore shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged and this is all the fruit to take away his sin when he maketh all the stones of the altar as chalk stones like dust see that are beaten in sunder the groves and images shall not stand up see you don't have to take a little lamb now to to the to the to a priest and he cuts its throat and lets the blood go out and he he burns it on the altar for your sin you don't have to do that anymore see you don't have to do that anymore Jesus said your house to the Jews of his time, Jesus was standing there weeping over Jerusalem, weeping and crying over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how would I have gathered you as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings? But ye would not. You would not. You will not see me henceforth until you say, Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. And he said, Your house. He's talking to that nation at that time, and it goes for today as well up until this time is left unto you desolate 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 that means empty it means absolutely vain empty desolate and it will remain that way until the people who call themselves by the name of Abraham by the name of Judah by the name of Israel that are physical descendants whether pretended or not until they call out with a broken heart unto the Savior of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, born as the son of David, the root and offspring of David, hallelujah, the son of Jesse, born in Bethlehem, according to the prophecy in Micah. Born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, Yeah, you have to repent of your sin and believe the gospel, just like Peter did, just like Paul did, the Pharisee. You have to believe. Hallelujah. Verse 10 of chapter 27 of Isaiah. Yet the defensed city shall be desolate, and the habitation forsaken, and left like a wilderness. There shall the calf feed. And there shall he lie down and consume the branches thereof. When the bows thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them. And he that formed them will show them no favor. That is so sad. But that's what's happened when you turn away from the Lord. That, that happens. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt. And ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. Ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. That's what God's doing today, isn't it? And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. Oh, hallelujah. And they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria. And the outcast 
in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. And it says that if you do a study today in Isaiah 17, 18, and 19, you'll see this great big thing God's fixing to do in, in the earth with people. God loves people so much, saints. We don't even understand the love of God. We really don't. We don't have a grasp upon it really fully. But God loves people so much. God is going to have a highway from Assyria down through Israel to Egypt, you see. And, and the highway, it's going to be somehow in the natural. I don't know how it's going to play out. But all in the spirit, it's already there. In the spirit, it's already there. There is a highway in the spirit from Assyria down through Israel and into Egypt. And Israel shall be the third. Israel is the chief. Okay. In other words, in the spirit, because right now, as a man of God, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, me and my wife as a woman of God, and together as one flesh, we could right now, if, if the Lord wanted us to, he would provide for it. We could go to Egypt and we could fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Egypt. And we could take one of them by the hand and bring him into Israel with us. And fellowship with a brother and sister in Israel. With our brother in Egypt. Taking him with us. And then we could go up into Syria and find some more brothers and sisters. And all of us could gather together and fellowship in the spirit, in the love, and in the mercy of God. Hallelujah. And worship him whose name is holy. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's what he wants. And that's what it's speaking of in the scripture. God has made everybody the same. See, he's turned the world upside down. We're all fallen and need a savior. And now that we have the savior, the old fallen nature is going more and more down, more and more down because we're learning how to grow in the spirit and walk in the spirit more and more every day. See, and so we press on to the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. We don't slack back, see? We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And we go forward in the name of the Lord, and we love the Lord, and we praise the Lord, and we glorify the Lord. And when we blunder, when we fall, when we when we accidentally fall, or, in, God forbid, willfully fall, see? We don't ever want to willfully fall. That's, that's harder. That, that, that's the reaping is harder. It, it's like the stalk comes up very hard. You know, after you willfully transgress the law of God, it's like this plant grows up, this fruit comes out that is so hard, and it's really a drag. And you don't want to ever do that. Pray God protect you from that. You know, but when those those things happen, you know, and you just you just something happens and the flesh rises up, you know, oh Lord, let that not be as well, Father. See, we pray, Father, I pray right now for your people, God. I thank you so much for answering the prayer of my wife this morning Lord thank you Lord that you answered her prayer we bless you today Father we thank you we we pray Lord for the people of God for your children and we pray for those you're bringing in Lord as well Lord we pray that you would touch your people today with just a hunger and a, a hunger for the deep things of God for the fullness that is Christ Jesus being manifested in their life today Lord more and more and in our lives Father we pray that you will so fill us today with your fire even more and more into the perfect day and that your river of living water would flow out of us all oh God that we would do those exploits you said we would do Lord you said they will be uh, uh, doing exploits going out hallelujah in that day what does that mean, Lord? Show us today. Show us what it means, O oh God. Lord, I pray you crush every work of darkness coming against your church today. For our brothers and sisters in prison, we pray, God, that you lift up a standard for them, O oh God. Lift up a standard for all of us, Lord, going through persecution, going through trials, going through uh, whatever we're going through today, Lord. Lift up the standard, your word, O oh God. Lift up the standard, your spirit, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, against all the works of darkness today for all of your children everywhere. Hallelujah. And crush the devil's work today. Let it be manifest the finished work of the Lord Jesus on the cross in the abolishing of death and the destruction of all evil. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, I pray. 
Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you all who belong to him. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. The Lord help you today to keep your mind stayed upon him. As you keep your mind stayed upon him, that means focused on him and seeing him. Hallelujah. Listening to him, being obedient to him and loving him. And when you blunder, confessing to him. When you sin, confess it to him. Confess it. And don't sin. Say no to sin. You have the power. We all have the power. We have the power of God in us. The, the Holy Ghost. We don't have to yield to sin. We can say no to sin. Hallelujah. We can say, I rebuke you, Satan. Say, Father God, Father God, right now, right now, I surrender. Father God, I submit to your will. I submit to you. And I resist you, Satan. You get away from me. Say it just like that. In Jesus' name. His name, authority, and character be upon you. That means all of who he is. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day. The Lord be with you today. Hallelujah. You are his. If you're born anew by the Spirit, you belong to the King of Kings. And so, therefore, all of us who are born again by the Spirit of God, and we're renewed, we have the fullness, hallelujah, in us, the Holy Ghost, which wants to come through us, wants to come through our spirit, into our soul, manifest through the body. May it be so this day. In Jesus' name, amen.